in its simplicity of genericism, and that's what I'm going to call it, Death and Taxes module really became a fabulous adventure for for us. Hey, welcome to Quest Givers, and we're here to talk about Bungwire's uh, experience with the Death and Taxes. So we're very excited that he shared his experience, and Gareth and I want to kind of talk about uh, what uh, we uh, heard about in the video. So yeah, thank you again, Bungwire's, for sharing that with us. We'll put a link to his full video in the description. Do you have any questions for Quest Givers? Become a Tavern regular by asking a question using video on social media. New modules will be available on the first of every month on QuestGivers.com with the complete campaign Kickstarter launching September 1st. You're sure to get hooked on adventure. The best, most awesome thing I can think of to say about this adventure was that the writers left it absolutely generic. Um, only a few of the major players had names. And so, and I really love to do that with my PCs, is that when you're RPing a huge adventure, it's really impossible. And I've always thought this as a player too, but much less a DM. But when you're a player, it's impossible to remember all kinds of names of people that are coming and going in the adventure. It's Tavern Keeper, it's a trader, it's an old person from town, whoever, they don't have names. And so when the PCs, as, as I play, encounter these characters who might have importance or whatnot, um, I like to let the PCs decide what the name of the person is. Fabulous, worked out great. The other fantastic thing was that um, the 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 way that the encounters ensued so there was really no technical method of saying first you got to go to x then you got to go to b and then y and then back and forth and, and none of that mattered you lay out the adventure right at the start and there's there are a few things that happen uh, to set the thing and the, the the everything in motion, you meet the little boy and you meet the the well dressed lady, and they tell you, oh, the taxes, oh, and the little boy's like, oh, you got to go talk to talk to Alice, and oh, um, by the way, um, the tax collector's coming tomorrow, and she's got this crazy monster attached to her, which you don't know is a crazy monster until whenever the crazy monster attacks. I, I really liked the kind of things he was throwing out. Uh, one thing that I found interesting was that he was saying, talking about the NPCs, like we have the major NPCs named, but he likes to run it so that he, like his players actually name the NPCs, which is really fun, is giving some control over to the players, which I always think is kind of fun. And so, you know, not every single NPC you meet has a name and this kind of thing. So you can, you're, you're free to do that. You know, you don't have to, there are major NPCs, of course, but you know, not every NPC, every little single NPC you meet has a particular name. So you're kind of free to name them yourself or, to have you like he did have your players actually name the npcs um i'm used to characters and pcs actually being moderate murder hobo and want to kill everything so i kind of anticipated that everyone that they would encounter in this town would end up dead but i didn't think that they would do it in such a way that they did and i also didn't think that they would leave town before the tax collector showed up to go and ambush her in the middle of the highway, the North Road. I didn't think that was going to happen. Um, and I and and I can and classic classic DM maneuver. In my previous adventures, um, we were playing a dungeon crawl, and I gave them a couple of um, things that they put together, and one of them was a flamethrower. And I didn't think, you know, yeah, you're in a dungeon, it's wall and stone and wet and you can't even, maybe, I don't know how it work, would work out in a dungeon. And I was thinking, that would be cool if they had one, but I don't think they would ever get to use it. Maybe on some really powerful monster. Um, of course, right at the end when everybody was like, what are we going to do? We're circling this wagon with with the tax collector and 
it looks like she's asleep in the in, in her in her coach and the henchmen are just sort of chilling around the fire we've got some sort of ability to do some sort of uh uh like surprise attack i know let's use the flamethrower on the carriage okay well what are the stats on the flamethrower and classic to me i'm always like Whatever the PCs say. If the PCs come up with a number, I'm like, good, done, do it. Uh, and so they're like, I don't know, what's like mm, 10d6? I'm like, perfect, 10d6 it is. Damage on the flamethrower. Torches the carriage. The next turn, the tax collector and this crazy creature fall out, kind of half singed. Oh my gosh, look at that. How many rolls did we make on the flamethrower? How many attacks did it have? Oh, it only had two. Excellent for a DM. Not so good for NPCs. Singed and torched. Yeah, and I like the way he talks about how it kind of went off the rails and they did different things, but it, they still was enough material to actually put the things together, what actually happens in the module. So I thought that, that, that that's, that's what we like to hear. It's like, you know, that we gave him enough material to, to actually run it in a different way. Uh, and my personal thing was the whole thing with the flamethrower. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, when you're writing something like this, you don't expect the players to have flamethrowers. But, you know, at least it's still held up. You know, it was still, it was still able to go ahead. Um, and so uh, thank you very much, Bung Wise, for sharing that. There was, it, it made my day, that one. <laughs> it was a fun moment, and it's like totally something we didn't expect in the module. But what I think worked for him was we gave him enough information that he could go off the rails and have them, uh, like, you know, and do the encounter, even though it was totally different than the way it was supposed to be run. He had enough information that he could easily run the encounter. So, and he did kind of admit that his players were, you know, murder hobos, right? So, and <laughs> the way I kind of see this game is like our modules is they're not very murdery hobo-y, but it was nice to know that if you're that way, that you can actually run, run the game and have a fun game and they, they seem to enjoy it and want to play more. Well, I mean, we do, in The Loyalist, we do anticipate that some people may be a little bit murder hobery and they may kill off some of the main NPCs. Um, so, you know, we kind of try to write for that, but it's very difficult when something may be important later on and you're kind of always killing off the NPCs. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're trying to make it versatile enough that if your if your group are basically a group of assassins that just kill everybody who walks in front of them, um, you know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it's good to know that you know. Obviously, we're writing in a vacuum until it hits the public. We don't know if it's going to you know have that kind of traction, and it's great to just get these responses from people. Your party lands on the shore of this town. I had a party and a bunch of PCs already engaged in an adventure and I magically teleported them out of that adventure with everything that they had done in those few moments or adventures, whatever we had done, I won't say. Um, and I teleported them out of that onto a ship, shackled, naked, invested in uh, a uh, storm and darkness and for several days they sat on the hull or front of this vessel shackled naked until finally the captain was like okay well you didn't escape and you seem like you're okay and we're almost at winter bay and um, we would like to uh, let you out of these shackles as long as you promise to be on good behavior and uh, do some work around pay your way so of course the party agree we get to winter bay and then the adventure and uh, moves forward so it was an easy little hook to get everyone invested in the adventure i gotta i gotta say fantastic couldn't believe it it worked out so well i'm uh, very happy can't wait to play another one in fact the we've we play in a group where there's myself i've just i've only really just started dming in the last two years but i've played for several you know generations and um my 
team and guys say that they want to just run this adventure next again right away. So I can't wait to get into the Loyalists and surprise to you because there's a whole subplot that I had to carry through from my previous games because I pulled them out of a dungeon. They already had ideas and, and subterfuge going on that I've had to tweak, already hack, if it were, this next adventure. And we're going to call it The Resurrectionists not the loyalists. And if you know anything about Glenn Cook, you'll know what I'm talking about. He had a little bit of adventure that he kept with his players before they came to Winter Bay, right? And he had this, this uh, subplot with the resurrectionists, okay? And that's basically not the, the, you know, the plot of our adventure, but he's gonna work that in. So I'm very interested to see how you do that, like how you kind of either usurp our subplot or add it in there, you know, so it becomes, it, you weave it into the, to the plot and make it very interesting. So I'm, I'm really excited to see that, and I think that's cool because you can do that as a, as a, as a GM DM. You can actually add your own material into these, like, like we've already say, hack them, you know, essentially, and add your own material into these. So, yeah, that's, he's going to make the loyalists the resurrectionists. So, yeah, very interested to see what happens there. And I'd like to encourage you, if you have an experience with our modules, Please send us a video on social media or upload it onto your YouTube channel, whatever. Get in contact with us because we want to share it with our community. We want to engage with you. We want to, you know, find out what you did. So, yeah, thank you very much, Bang Wires, for sharing that with us. And we hope to see a lot more of your campaign in the future. Bring it on, DM Scotty. Thank you, Gareth. Cheers, guys. All right, guys, you take care. We're Quest Givers, Gareth and DM Scotty. Go check out our website. We got modules up there for you guys. And we're so glad you're enjoying the material and having fun running it because that is our biggest reward, that you guys have fun with this stuff. So, uh, shit. <laughs> Get hooked on adventure. <laughs> I always want to say go forth and craft. <laughs> Oh man, the joys of making internet content. <laughs> Get up that adventure! Click some things in the bottom there. <laughs> Do all that stuff down there.